Hi, I'm Garrett Town with AM Solar, and this is Sean Wilson, one of our head installers. Uh, looks like we're working on a Mercedes Sprinter 3500 170 extended wheelbase, uh, 2012. What else can you tell us about this rig? It's on its uh, second life as a, a, a adventure mobile. It used to be a work truck. Yeah, we have a bare bones van here that we're going to do a uh, Victron lithium system on, and it's uh, going to be built up over the next week. We're going to document the uh, the process. Well, let's go inside. Show me what you got going on here. What's the plan? Yeah, so as you can tell, this van has been used before. Um, lots of folks are buying kind of secondhand sprinters and building them up as these campers. So uh, we have obviously the extended wheelbase. It's a pretty long van. Um, really good workspace for quite a bit of solar and uh, a big system back here. So this particular customer ended up going with our Up on the Mountain kit. Uh, we have four pre-configured kits on our website and the Up on the Mountain kit is like the premium kit. Uh, so we're dealing with 400 amp hours of V4 Victron lithium with a Victron Multi Plus 3000 VA inverter with 120 amp charger. Yeah. Um, what are we doing for solar? What's on the roof? On the roof we're going to do two 170 watt panels. Um, that's going to be brought into a 30 amp charge controller with a monitored via Bluetooth and then brought into the system back here. Okay. So, um, you know, this is a, an empty shell van. Uh, what if someone brought you a van that was already built out? What, what would you be doing differently? How can you do that? Um, the only difference is that typically at that point you have more um, obstructions, cabinets, uh, bed platform, things like that. So wire runs can be a little bit more difficult. It's great when we have them in this condition. Um, it's the easiest to do uh, cable routing, to bring in the solar, all that type of stuff is really um, more easy at this point in the job than it is when they're further built. Okay, so you talk about cable routing. It sounds like you know there's definitely if you were doing this in stages, uh, it would probably make sense to route some cables before um, you actually do the work. So um, some of the cables we've got a cable for the solar charger. Yeah, we're gonna have a solar penetration. Um, we're gonna have a shore uh, inlet coming in to charge the batteries off the uh, uh, inverter charger, and then we're also gonna have uh, alternator charging that's gonna come back from the. Uh, uh, engine bay or uh, from underneath the seat here. Okay, uh, uh, the alternator charger cable, what size is that going to be? That's going to be a 2 watt cable and that's okay. based on the current flow of the inverter. So pretty large cable. Pretty thick, like the size of an index. Finger. It is, yep. Okay. So if you're going to build out your van and you're thinking about building cabinets and whatnot, just uh, maybe consider bringing in solar. Um, kind of think about where the system is going to be. And uh, so for this kit, you know, we're talking a, a 30 amp charge controller, two 170 watt panels. Um, that will be a six gauge duplex cable. If you thought you were gonna do way more solar, the biggest cable we ever run is a two gauge duplex, but uh, if you just wanna play it safe, give yourself maximum expandability, six gauge or four gauge on a van is plenty solid. Yep, and you have really short routes typically um, compared to larger motorhomes, so it's uh, safe to go with the larger cables. Okay, and since this is a shell here, tell us how you plan on securing the equipment. Where, where's how are you mounting things since they're eventually going to build out? Yeah, typically we're going to look at this rear space, either the passenger or the driver's side, depending on kind of where you're going to build out the, uh, the kitchen and the rest of the van. Um, the process is basically to build a piece of plywood that will mimic the shape of the van, kind of going over the wheel well, and that's going to give us a build platform to mount most of the componentry to, as well as secure the batteries to that board. Okay, so we're going to have two of those lithium 200 amp hour batteries. So that's a 400 amp hour battery bank. Mm -hmm. uh, with these Victron lithiums, you can use the top 80% of them. So 80% times 400 is uh, 320 amp hours. And if you multiply that by 12 volts, then you get the watt hours. So we're looking at about 4 kilowatt hours of usable energy. Yeah, plenty of storage. Yeah. Um, what? What's someone going to be able to run with a system like this? This is pretty powerful. Yeah, uh, this particular customer is planning on running an air conditioner. He's going to be in some uh, hot climates, so that can all be ran off of these batteries and this inverter. Um, you can run coffee pots, microwaves, induction cooktops, um, refrigerators, pretty much anything you want to do, and multiple at the same time. Yeah, you could, uh, if you were crazy enough, you could probably even put a dishwasher in here and uh, laundry machines and maybe even power your friend's van right next to you. This is a very powerful system. Yeah. Um, what's, what's the cost on something like this, Sean? Um, I'm not sure. You're not sure? <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll tell you. Uh, <laughs> on our website, we sell this kit for um, 
about nine thousand mm -hmm. dollars and uh, if you want to have a smart guy like Sean install it that's about another nine thousand dollars in labor and uh, you get what you pay for this is a premium kit mm -hmm. uh, if society collapses and uh, there's zombies everywhere or whatever <laughs> you're still gonna be hanging out in your van brewing coffee and not have any hiccups with your power yep. this this thing is gonna completely last. off grid yeah. yeah very durable exactly um, let's see let's talk about uh, the alternator charging system a little more. Sure. So, um, this t vans like this size. What, what size alternator do they typically have? Typically, they have a 160 amp alternator um, pre-installed from the factory. That's just kind of standard for these types of vans. Um, with lithium batteries, we're going to be able to soak up almost all of that um, using a bi-directional relay installed in, in line for the uh, the alternator. Okay. And uh, that bi-directional relay, it's called a Victron Cirrix LICT. And what it does is when it senses a charging source on either battery, the Victron batteries or your starter battery, it will close the connection between the two batteries. So when your alternator turns on, it will close that connection, it will charge your starter battery, or keep that maintained, and it usually takes about 40 amps when a rig's going to maintain the starter battery. And then the rest of the current, which is dependent on the alternator rating, uh, the charge status, the RPMs, uh, that will go to the lithium battery. And the system is designed to where it can handle 200 amps, but it's very unlikely that you'll get that much charge. If you've got... Um, uh, let's just say you got 200 amps. It's probably going to be about three hours of drive time to take you from a, your 20% uh, uh, charge status all the way up to a full battery. And uh, you know, a lot of people say, I don't want to combine the two battery banks in my van. I, I think that might be kind of dangerous for the starter battery. Not at all. This technology is advanced. It's safe, and with a van, the alternator charge is your primary source of power because you're not going to be having as much roof space for solar, and you're driving it around frequently. Whereas, you know, like a big Class A motorhome is going to be parked for a while, so um, you know you're not getting as much alternator charge on. Yeah, that. a lot of the van lifers are moving around a lot, um, going to different campgrounds. Uh, you know, every couple days, you should be confident that you can show up to the next campsite and have. Uh, either completely charged batteries or nearly completely charged batteries. Yeah. Uh, another charging source is the shore power uh, that comes in through the inlet that we talked about that will be mounted um, one of these. Yeah, one of these two here. rear bays we're actually going to put a 30 amp inlet that will uh, run through a, a breaker, a main in input breaker, and then through the inverter and into all the AC loads which you can mount uh, throughout the, the coach. Okay, so after it comes in through the inlet, it goes to the breaker, yep. and then it goes to your multi plus 3000 inverter charger. Yeah. And that takes that AC, it converts it into DC that exactly matches the charging parameters of what your lithium batteries need, and it can charge 120 amps um, onto your lithium battery. So that'll take you from your 20% state of charge up to a full charge. And you know, again, about three hours, which is pretty fast. You you wouldn't be able to get that much current onto lead acid batteries, lithium batteries, except current at a much faster rate. Yeah, a really cool feature that this inverter has is that it's a uh, what's called a hybrid inverter, meaning that if you uh, can't access a 30 amp shore inlet and you're just at a, let's say your friend's house and he gives you his 15 amp extension cord, um, you can actually let this uh, inverter know that you're on 15 amps. It'll run all that it can and charge if it can off of that 15 amps, but if you were to turn on additional loads in here, it's going to take the needed power out of the batteries and hybridize or help out with the loads and uh, continue to power the coach. Let's talk about some of the equipment that's involved in the solar charging system. Uh, what are some of the considerations that people need to make when they're planning a solar array on the roof of a rig? Um, like, uh, where do you not want to put panels? Yeah, basically, we're just trying to stay away from the front of the coach if possible. We don't want to be up there for uh, wind. Wind's going to be, you know, you're, you're driving down the road, you're going to get a lot of uh, resistance from that. Also, any kind of branches or uh, limbs that you're driving down roads might kind of snag the, the panels themselves. So just coming off the front a bit and then kind of looking at what other obstructions you have on the roof. If you have an air conditioner or a fan, anything that might need maintenance or uh, additional sealant down the road, just kind of give those uh, that equipment some, some room. From yeah, the be thinking about a walkway so you can access everything on your roof. Exactly. And uh, we don't penetrate the roof with the solar panel mounts. We don't have to. Tell no. us about our mounting system. Yeah, basically we have these stainless steel mounts. This is the component that actually mounts to the panel itself. And we have a little T-knob here to loosen. You can tilt the panels. 
Um, on the bottom of the actual mounting foot, we just have some 3M VHB tape. It's very high uh, bond tape. It's 80 pounds of adhesion per square inch. So with four of these holding a panel down, it's not really gonna go anywhere. Um, we do seal the feet afterwards uh, just to protect the tape from uh, yeah, we, any damage. We bury the whole thing in Cicaflex sealant mm -hmm. so that the tape isn't exposed to the weather. And one nice thing about these mounts is uh, if you decide to park in an area for a long time and you want to get a little bit more uh, solar production, you can unscrew these and add our uh, optional tilt bars, which will allow you to angle the solar panel up, uh, point it towards the south to increase the cross-sectional surface area of your solar panel and increase your energy production. And it's also a nice feature for cleaning under your solar panels because leaves and sticks and debris tend to accumulate underneath the solar panel. Yeah, on a van like this, when you don't have the option to put you know, a lot of solar on the roof, being able to tilt the panels and get more production is a uh, big benefit. So Sean, tell us about uh, how the solar panels are connected in this yeah, combiner so box. The, this is a combiner box, it's just kind of mock-up that we've made. You can see that we have uh, six ports here, typically not going to be what you have on a van roof here. but. Basically, we have each uh, panel coming in in parallel. And the panel is like, you've got two wires for positive and negative. Yep. They go in to one port. Uh, we're only going to be using two. This demo has six. Yeah, and then we're going to go to either the um, negative or positive bus bar with those cables. And then you have this larger cable here. This reflects the solar cable that penetrates the roof. Um, this whole combiner box gets sealed, so you're not going to have any kind of weather damage. And then this is the cable that will go down to the charge controller. Yeah, the cable going down to the roof, that's the 6 gauge duplex that I talked about. And uh, you've got a hole here, and this box is designed to cover that hole and make everything weather tight. Uh, we, we drill the hole out, then we put some putty in there, and then we fill it with the Dicor sealant, yep. everything is sealed, and then we seal around the combiner box. We yep. don't have leaks in our system. The lid's got a gasket on here, and then these are weather tight strain reliefs to keep any kind of moisture out. All right. Yeah. So, um, let's see, tell us about some of the monitoring and control options. Yeah, so there's going to be a couple uh, monitors. A lot can be done via Bluetooth now. Um, we're going to have a monitor for the inverter itself that'll give you a basically a three-way remote switch that's also located on the faceplate of the inverter. It allows you to turn the inverter on, off, or into charge only. Um, it also allows you to dial in that current limit we talked about. Um, the other monitor that you're going to have is a uh, hard mount monitor for the battery. Um, so you can see what the charge state of the batteries are, what you're putting in, amperage, what's coming out of the batteries, just kind of everything you need to know about the uh, battery levels of the coach. So this is the monitor that controls the inverter. This is the one that you access all the time. You set your incoming current limit, so if you're plugged into your friend's 15 amp service, you want to dial that down to below 15 amps so that um, you're not going to trip the breaker in his house and you're always going to be using this on off switch for the inverter because you don't just leave your inverter on it has a no load draw of about 20 watts so whenever you're not using an ac appliance you turn it off and if you really like monitoring systems which on a rig like this i don't want people to think that they're running a power station i want them to enjoy camping and with a power system this powerful you don't need to really think about power it's just going to take care of itself it's just going to be there for you so I, I try and keep the monitors and displays on the walls to a minimum, but uh, if you really wanted to have something, we sell a Victron Color Control GX monitor that gives a uh, full color animated display of how all the systems in your rig are interacting and tells you where all the power is flowing and shows you the status of the batteries, how much charging watts you're getting from solar, from shore power, whatever. Yeah, this is that uh, battery monitor, that BMP 712. Uh, this also has Bluetooth, so you can uh, log in with your phone and, and see what the, the battery production is instead of looking at this much smaller screen. Still a nice monitor, though. Okay. Uh, tell us about the uh, DC distribution system. It's uh, basically it's centered around this six-circuit uh, box. Where would yeah. this go? Why would somebody mm -hmm. need this? So we want to put this as close to the batteries as possible. Basically, what this allows is for you to have... Um, DC loads, so we're talking lights, uh, any kind of USB outlets um, that you can run in the coach that does not need to be inverted, you don't need AC power for. Um, DC loads are typically a little bit more efficient since you don't have to uh, invert DC to AC and then supply that power. You can just go straight from the batteries to the load itself um, and that's what this fuse block allows you to do. Alright, uh, you mentioned batteries, let's talk about our V 
4.3 lithium battery system. Uh, with lithium batteries, you need to be careful not to overly discharge them, to overcharge them, or to charge them when they're frozen. And uh, the batteries communicate to this device via M8 COM cables, and then this device communicates to a proprietary board we call our V4.3 board, and that controls all the charging sources and discharging sources, and it has its own temperature sensor. And it just shuts things off or turns things on appropriately to make your system absolutely foolproof. It's going to take care of itself. Um, if, it's, if the batteries are frozen, which would be kind of odd in a rig where they're inside, it will prevent you from charging them when they're frozen. You don't have to worry about accidentally putting a charge on them and damaging them. It all takes care of itself. Um, it prevents the DC distribution system from over discharging. Um, let's see, you can also log into the batteries, the individual batteries, with a Bluetooth app, the Victron Connect app. Um, yeah, for all you like adventurers out there that are going, you know, maybe up skiing uh, one month and then the next down in Arizona uh, doing some, some mountain biking, let's say, uh, like Gary was saying, it's all temperature controlled, so you're not going to have to worry about. Uh, Charging or discharging the batteries when the when the temperature is not appropriate, um, so they're just well protected. You can kind of just go have your fun and, and not worry about it. Are there any details uh, we're missing? Mm. I think that covers it. How, how long will it take uh, the crew to install something like this? About seventy hours of labor time. Um, we got a good crew here, so we're gonna kind of get after it with uh, people on all all aspects of the job. So if somebody brought their rig in like this on a Monday morning, when can they expect to come out with a finished? Band. Yeah, about Friday. We're going to do it about one week. Okay, mm -hmm. right on. Well, it sounds like you've got a lot to do. I'll let you get at it. <laughs> exactly. Thank you. Thank you.